What do you need to know? Well, how do you start colts? Colts? When you start them, y'all rope them, get a coulter on them, or? Well, we halter break them when, they, uh, when we wean them. So you and already got them? Well, no, that's when we halter break yeah, them. That's yeah, about. when we wean them. We wean them, and I really, I built a thing up there, a little crowding pen, and when I got down here by myself, I used to have boys help me, you know, and we'd just catch them, halter them, and tie them up, and that kind of thing. But down here by myself, I would, I built a chute in the side of a crowding pen. I could run a colt in there and open this door back. When he got in, I could follow him right around and lock it. And all he had to do was walk into the chute. And I had a door that I could pull a deal and it locked and I wouldn't do a thing there. I would just let him stand and get settled down and everything. And if he had wasn't really stirred up, I might give him a little bit of alfalfa. And if I did that about two times, well, they would. Then I'd throw a block of alfalfa down in the floor, right up at the head of the chute. Shoot, boy, they'd make a dive in that chute and eat that alfalfa. Well, while they were eating that, I'd be rubbing them and fooling Putting with them. On, and uh, then I'd get uh, some kind of a cloth and get them used to that. And then I'd get it on a string. And now, they were wings give them a little whipping with that soft cloth and, uh, and uh, then I would get them out and tie them. Uh, well, I'd turn them out, I'd halter them and put a drag rope on them. And uh, I'd open the chute gate and I'd let them out in a big corral and I'd let a two or three or four together, maybe that way. And they'd walk around out there in the corral and get used to dragging the ropes, and I'd use about a 20-foot drag rope. And they'd step on it, and they'd get tangled up and stuff. But I'd keep them straight, and uh, I tried to keep them from tangling too much with each other. And uh, when they got used to dragging that drag rope, well, then I'd put them in that little crowding pen again, and I'd just tie them to the fence. And uh, I, I put an inner tube mm -hmm. around the pipe and, tied and ran it through, and then I ran my rope mm -hmm. through the inner tube. And I left them just a little slack, but really in that little crowding pen they didn't have hard enough room to really run backwards run back they yeah. back up yeah. but they couldn't do nothing much and i let them fool with that about a, three or four times then i'd just tie them outside mm -hmm. and by then i'd have them lead so i'd lead them to water they your friend. And they <laughs> liked that That's pretty right. quick. <laughs> and uh, I, I always tried to do it is the easiest way you could, and I'd get them all for gym. And uh, I broke four broncs up there one winter while I was had time. And uh, how were how were these coats when you started saddling them? Started? Oh, I wait till they're long twos. Probably August, in the second yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sometimes I've broken them quicker than that, but I never did ride them much or anything. Just kind of saddle them. When I turned them loose from halting, they were used to have being saddled. I had to teach them that when they was the winners. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 
then uh, I'd saddle those horses, get them up and saddle them, and uh, I'd take each one in, sack him every day, and fool with him about on the ground, maybe drive him on the ground in a, yeah, not yeah. a big pen with two ropes. A lot of times I teach them to stop on yeah. the ground. Yeah. A lot of times I teach them to back up on the ground. And uh, then when I got on them, hell, they just thought it was another beating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They 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 weren't scared of anything, and uh, let me, let me, I broke let me. four horses that winter and fed a whole bunch of cattle, and uh, they never did a one of them pitch. You never learned how. But I did have one that learned how to run away. I. I I, I sent that horse over there to a fella at uh, LaFour's to break, and that horse got to run away with him. He was, he'd ride him and lead some more to the river that he was breaking. And that horse got scared, well he'd just ride him. And he'd just dally one or two of them coats to that horn and ride let him, him fight it. But it never did break him from that, and uh, we, I finally sold the horse, but we sold him to, we'd made a horse out of him, and he's the nice horse I ever rode. One day I was, it had rained and washed all the gaps out, and I was going clear around the outside of the range. And, we just trod along looking at the fences and the good rain and everything. And I got just as far from the ranch house as I could, which was about, I guess, 15 miles, mighty close to it. Yeah. And over in a corner. We just, I just turned at the corner there. We were going up the fence, and that son of a bitch just like that was gone. He made such a jump that he jerked my right foot out of the stirrup. And there was a deep canyon that went clear to the fence up there ahead of us, about uh, 20 a quarter and a half a mile. You well, knew it and he didn't. I knew that, and I knew he didn't give a damn. Yeah. Well, I never did pull on a runaway horse. I just might try to hold him a little straight or something. But if they wouldn't give to you, I never tried to do something with them. If I didn't have draw rein or something, then I'd turn them. And, uh, Explain draw rein. Yeah. To the I mean to the camera. Boy, you can turn pull one's head around, he might keep running, but he's gonna hurt himself That's worse. Right. Than but he but does. the draw range, how do you put them, Bill, through My, the through the D range? Tell I them hooked them in the D range yeah. and ran them through a snaffle bed and had them a halter that was mighty good and wasn't gonna pull with the bed or That's anything. Right. Got to be careful about all that. You really need a nose band yeah, on them when yeah, you do that. Yeah, I use it. So you more. can't pull that through their mouth. That's right. And anyway, so they come out of their mouth. I, mean, well, I pulled a bridle clear through one's reason I need. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, see, I mean, this is things that people that, that just never been around this won't know. Nah. You know, I mean. Well, but they won't know what you're talking about. If you well, tell that's probably them true. Trouble. But I mean, somewhere down the road, there's people that have maybe come back to it, just yeah. like you was talking about. Yeah. Well, it, it's still more economical to run a, a, a team of wagons than it is a sixty thousand dollar truck. And it, and I, and it's. I'll guarantee you, they'll never give it up unless they have to. Well, they won't. It makes, they'll go broke buying a damn car. I don't tell you what I noticed when I was growing. These farmers were dead broke for five years, I'll say, and then they got to making a little money. 
They didn't have a bathroom. They didn't have water in the houses. They had a damn cistern out there where they got their drinking water. They didn't try to improve a damn thing. They bought a car. Cars didn't cost much. You could buy a coupe for $500. But that'd be 15000 now. No, $500. hell, it, it would be, it'll be close to 50000 yeah, Okay, yeah. Hell. You can't afford they to, can't afford to do that. Uh -uh. Well, and uh, Rusty Cates, the ones I was telling you about on them that's got that motorcycle race, just traded, well he leased it. It is sixty-one thousand dollars a dually Dodge dually, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, of course he pulled his race trailer with it and this, that and the other, but I mean there there ain't no way in the world you can pay for a rancher and pay that kind of money for it. Well, I want I mean, to tell you, there's a lot of people, and some of them in Clarendon, that have bought sixty-five to eighty-five thousand dollar pickups. Are they putting feeders on them? No. Cake feeders? Ah, they, they. I don't believe a rancher can't do that. No, he can't. Uh, I mean, if unless he just full of oil wells yeah, or that's something. That's right. Some of them up there around Pampa, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell you, uh, we went down to we went down I to Matador. Up. We went down to Matador, and and boy, at Snyder, that's where that last race was. Bill, it's just awful. They they drilling everywhere Why, yeah. in the world that they can drill. I mean, Why, sure, I do. Largest oil field in the world has been discovered between Tohoka, Texas and uh, Midland, clear to the New Mexico line. Mm -hmm. All of West Texas and it... it in the Alpine area. Yeah, oh, yeah well, that's Alpine what I'm saying. Boston, all of West all Texas all shall, and their shallow wells. I asked a guy from Canadian, and I said, why are they moving off down there when they've already got all this stuff going up here? He said, boy, it's the drilling depth. So down there, it's real shallow, and up here we're going 10,000 feet. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think that we'll get any more oil play up in this country in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. I think it'll all be. What are you coming on? The down? next thing is what about water? They're using up that Ugalala aquifer. These damn. I mean, if, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about. Have you got a? Have you got a? An irrigation well? Yeah. Yeah. I've got four of them. Well, and I want to tell you, I've got one of them that'll pump 1,700 gallons a minute. God almighty. And I haven't used it in seven years. Well, because <laughs> I didn't have to. What I'm asking is, aren't we using up the water faster? I mean, well, and the farmers are, are putting out these. The, see, when I when I first learned to rope, I, I were on the rope on flood irrigated wheat. Okay. And if you didn't catch doubles, you had to get down to Doctor the calf and get the ropes. Yeah. You know, but anyway, what I'm saying is that they broke out a lot of ground that never should have been broke out. Well, of course they did. But I'll tell you one thing. As more people get here, the more water you got to have, and they're going to have to have more water. And uh, what's the answer? The answer is one of two things. We lose probably way over half of the water that falls in the United States is probably goes to the ocean. You can redirect things like the Missouri River 
maybe the some of the bunch of the Mississippi River and bring it down through the country into Talk rivers. about aqueducts or? Well, I don't know how you'd bring it down. You, you could run it on top of the land and cut ditches and That's just run it through about, yeah. dirt yeah. and it wouldn't lose any more than it loses in Mississippi. But uh, I, I don't, I think that someone well and they'd have ways there are people now that in fact my granddaughter lives in Dubai Dubai uh, yeah that's over yonder in uh, the other side of the world oh, yeah oh, okay Dubai. and uh, I think that's all Dubai, a, Dubai, Texas, that's I, an Arab country yeah it is Arab and it D Dubai is a real wealthy town, and uh, what she doing they there, have baby? developed seawater good enough that they use it in their houses. Now they, they have got seawater, the salt out of seawater enough that they can use it for household use. But they say it still costs more to get it to where you can drink it. Yeah. But hell. The program's already started, so it won't be long till they figure out some way to do it. They'll figure out a yeah. way to get yeah. us some more yeah. water when they get thirsty. And uh, I just have made a point I, I bought well I inherited my daddy's place here and I bought uh, 1400 acres up here that's irrigated farmland and I planted it to grass thank God and uh, I bought an alfalfa farm west of Clarendon, and it's all alfalfa, it's not big for them. And uh, it, everything I've ever bought, I've kept the mineral zone and the water. Well, if, if one man's running, uh, one of them strengthens. They had water. And you see another man's windmill go down next to it. It told you? Yeah. Well, it told you they didn't pay a damn bit of attention when they dried up Red River out I here see. or when they dried up Mulberry here. These creeks used to be a half a mile wide. Where's and the only, uh, well, the only reason they're not running more now is they planted so much of this grass that it's holding the water up in these rivers. This, this river here was a half a mile wide and there wasn't an island or anything How in it. How deep was it, Bill? Well, it's just a flat creek. Yeah. It wasn't okay. running water. Yeah. But I'm saying the creek bed was that wide yeah. when I was young yeah. until I was 20 years old. About 1950, it seemed like the creek started narrowing up a little, and I think the reason for that is it had rained a lot in the 40s, and the pastures that were so short in the 30s through all that 10 years of drought, grew grass and then people built terraces and dams and things that have cut a lot of water out of the creeks. But when the government came out and paid all these farmers so much to plant an uh, acre of farmland into grass, it was mostly all dry land. Well, that created something. The grass is tall, 
And by God, it don't run out of it very much. You know, it, it, right it, uh, it shoots that whole mm -hmm. sap water up. And just like me, I had all of this grass where I could water it because I'd been through that 53 I'm drought. Fine. I'm fine. Well, I have them running the irrigation well now in seven years. Seven years. And that old grass has captured what water we get. And I've, well, I have never tried, I've tried to understock my pasture land always. I never graze it. I know all. that. I know that. And, uh, but that's, a, that's that one of the few people, I'll tell you especially that, if it's on lease land. That blue. You know, they, you, they see these people going there in lease land, and I mean, it's just, Tom, well, Tom Christian's place. They've just, Tom's, what? they. Yeah, they had to graze it into the dirt. It, it, it's, it's tore up the turf. Why, Man. yeah, they kill it. Yeah, they run it. And, they just, but they don't have much land. They're not many no, people no, let them right. get by with that. That's anymore. right. That's right. But look, getting back to these horses, after you got them going, saddled and going, you put them on cattle pretty quick. Oh, I always start prowling cattle on the Bronx, like those sick calves, yeah. you know, and things yeah. like that. And first thing you know, we'd be picking them up on the Bronx and driving them to the pen, or we'd get, have the horses used to a rope and had to rope something outside, but we could go ahead and do it. And that, that to me, that's the only way to break a hole. I think so too. And, I think so too. That is uh, that drag fact. rope. That drag rope makes a difference. They, I mean, they, Why, they sure. learn to stop. They learn to get their, you know, learn when they get their head. It hangs. Yeah. They quit. Yes, yeah. Get their foot in the wire. They're liable to just hold it there. That's right. You let them out. That's right. I mean, they're not going to be like having to rope them to snub them up and mm -hmm. to a post and throw you saddle on and get on. Them you horses know, hurt that, you. That day's gone. Yeah. And I'll say this, that I've always concentrated on riding a good horse and making a good horse. And I probably could make a good horse quicker after I was 80 years old than ever before in my life. I, I boy, I could. I used to rope Acting calves. 80 years old. I used to rope calves, and God, I'd work on the horse's stop, you know, and then okay. teaching him to back up and getting him to back up just right. When I was about 80. Did you tie on or was you dabbing? Sure, I tied on. Hell, I never dabbed. You didn't never daddy when you're out there in a pasture by yourself or open the goddamn I know, anything. I know. And uh, that dallying all came when te team roping came out yep, here from dude. California. That's right. And uh, the only reason the ropers went to it, they used to all rope calves and they were so damn lazy they didn't want to get off and tie the calves. <laughs> That's right. So they they liked team roping, and they were very hard for them to conquer the people that were really learning how. And sometimes I think they haven't learned how yet. I've seen some awful good team ropers on television just go five or six in a row and do every damn thing wrong yep. you could do. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I just don't, I don't think, you know, and <clears throat> tripping cattle is a... We used to team rope and stay tied on in Texas here, and it was a pretty good sport everybody liked. Yeah. But you had to get off and tie a, a knot around their both their hind legs. Yeah, yeah. Well, when the daddy people came in, see, they couldn't do that. So that ended the hard and fast. And, and another thing, see, they don't have screw worms anymore. No, they don't. And you don't have to rope outside very much. Well, it's gotten to be where 
them cake, they, the horses ain't what they used to be because they don't use them. Well, they've got some good horses. Oh, I, know, I know, but they, they, they don't use them like they... I'll tell you, there's a lot of them you could get on, and if you just trotted him across the country, you wouldn't like him at all. That's there's right. a lot of those old horses in the arena, just rough as oh, hell. And I know, and I, I had a little old yellow horse that had come out of the arena, never had been outside much, and I mean, you had to hold him in there because the first time when you when you cocked him and and and, and, and roped that calf for that steer, he was going to turn left. It didn't matter which way you. I mean, he was going <laughs> to turn left. You better be ready. <laughs> I mean, he'd been, you know, I just, 